The McDonnell Douglas F4 Phantom II is an American tandem two-seat, twin-engine, all-weather, long-range, supersonic jet interceptor and fighter bomber that was originally developed for the United States Navy. They had a length of 63 feet, a wingspan of 38 feet 5 inches, an empty weight of 30,328 pounds, a max takeoff weight of 61,795 pounds, and they're powered by a pair of General Electric J79 GE 17A afterburning turbojet engines. Those engines could push the F4s to an astonishing Mach 2.23. And McDonnell Douglas likely never dreamed of how prevalent the F-4s would become. Not only did they see service in the Navy, but also the Air Force, the Marines, as well as numerous other countries. Over a dozen different variants of the F-4s would be produced, resulting in a total number built of 5,195 individual aircraft, thus rendering it the most produced American supersonic military aircraft ever. And while they weren't perfect, their legacy lasts until this very day. And they're definitely one of the most popular airplanes that has ever flown. The development of the F-4 can be traced back all the way to 1952, when the CEO of McDonnell Aircraft, Jim McDonnell, appointed Dave Lewis, who was the chief of aerodynamics, to be the company's new preliminary design manager. At the time, the company did not expect a new aircraft competition to be held by any of the United States military branches anytime soon, and they couldn't exactly sit around and just twiddle their thumbs in the meantime, so they ran an internal study that showed that the Navy would likely have the greatest need for a new type of aircraft, specifically an attack fighter. The next year, 1953, they began working on revising their pre-existing F-3H Demon naval fighter, looking to expand their capabilities and push for better performance out of them. They wound up creating a few different variants that generally involved switching out their engines, and one of which was powered by the General Electric J-79. That version promised a top speed of nearly Mach 2, and on September 19th, 1953, McDonnell approached the Navy with a proposal for the, as they called it, Super Demon. The aircraft was supposed to be modular, so it could be fitted with one or two seat noses for different missions, and would have different nose cones to accommodate radar, photo cameras, cannons or rockets, in addition to the nine hard points that'd be under the wings and fuselage. The Navy was interested, and ordered a full-scale mock-up of what was designated the F-3H-GH. And while it was neat and all, they felt that the upcoming Grubbin XF9F9 and the Vought XF8U1 would already satisfy their need for a supersonic fighter, so they didn't want to push forward with the F3H. McDonald didn't give up, though. They reworked it into an all-weather fighter bomber with 11 external hardpoints for weapons, and on October 18th of 1954, they did receive a letter of intent for two YAH1 prototypes. Then on May 26, 1955, four Navy officers showed up at the McDonnell offices, and within an hour, presented them with an entirely new set of requirements. The Navy already had the Douglas A-4 Skyhawk for ground attack, as well as the F-8 Crusader for dogfighting. What they were looking for from McDonnell was an all-weather fleet defense interceptor. And as a result, McDonnell had to rework the design again, this time adding a second crewman, because it was believed that air combat in the next war, given all the new tools in the form of advanced radar that were available, would actually overwhelm solo pilots with information. This would ultimately lead to the XF4H1 prototype, which was designed to carry four semi-recessed AAM N6 Sparrow 3 missiles, and it was powered by two J79 GE-8s. It was similar to the McDonnell F-101 Voodoo, and indeed the F-4 definitely owes something in terms of certain design attributes to what was learned with both the Voodoo and the Demon. The prototype's engine sat low in the fuselage to maximize internal fuel capacity, as well as ingested air through fixed geometry intakes. The thin section wing had a leading edge sweep of 45 degrees, and it was equipped with blown flaps for better low speed handling. However, wind tunnel tests did reveal lateral instability, so to fix that, 
they added a 5 degree dihedral to the wings. And to avoid having to redesign the titanium central section of the aircraft, the engineers angled up only the outer portions of the wings by 12 degrees. The all-moving tailplane was given 23 degrees of anhedral control to improve performance at high angles of attack while still keeping the tailplane clear of the engine exhaust. The air intakes were also equipped with one fixed ramp and one variable geometry ramp to give maximum pressure recovery between Mach 1.4 and Mach 2.2 and the all-weather intercept capability was achieved with the AN-APQ-50 radar. On July 25, 1955, the Navy ordered two XF-4H-1 test aircraft, as well as five YF-4H-1 pre-production examples of the planes, and it made its maiden flight on May 27, 1958, with Robert C. Little at the controls. A hydraulic problem actually precluded the retraction of the landing gear, but the flights after that went much better. These early tests resulted in redesigning the air intakes, including the distinctive addition of 12,500 holes, which were meant to bleed off the slow-moving boundary layer air from the surface of each intake ramp. The series production aircraft also had splitter plates to divert the boundary layer away from the engine intakes. And the F-4 was soon in competition with the XF-8 U-3 Crusader III, Due to cockpit workload, the Navy actually wanted a two-seat aircraft, and on December 17, 1958, the F-4H was indeed declared the winner. However, delays with the J-79 GE-8 engines meant that the first production aircraft were fitted with J-79 GE-2 and 2A engines instead, but those were still very good engines, each being able to supply 16,100 pounds of force. In terms of the nickname for the craft, early proposals included both Mithras as well as Satan. No, seriously, someone thought they should call it Satan. But it was decided they should probably not go with something that might seriously offend someone, so they went with Phantom 2. Yes, most people would call the F-4 Phantom just Phantom, but it was actually the Phantom 2. The original McDonnell FH Phantom was also a jet aircraft, and it was first flown during the end of World War II. The original F-4s with the weaker engines never actually saw combat. 45 of them were produced and they were designated F-4As. But the definitive version of the F-4s, the F-4Bs, first flew March 25th, 1961. And 649 of those were produced. They showed significant promise in terms of performance and their speed and power was impressive. Both the Navy and the Marine Corps began using them and eventually started the Air Force which was the result of Defense Secretary Robert McNamara, who was pushing to cut costs by convincing all military branches to use the same type of aircraft. This policy, while financially sensible, wasn't really achievable in the grand scheme of things, because each branch had very different requirements, but he was able to talk the Air Force into using the F-4, especially when an F-4B won Operation High Speed, which was a fly-off against a Corvair F-106 Delta Dart. Upon seeing the performance, the Air Force did decide to borrow two of the F-4Bs from the Navy in order to develop requirements for their own version. The Navy was focused at the time on air-to-air -air interception, but the U.S. Air Force was looking for a plane that can do both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground. The first Air Force Phantom, designated the F-4C, the first flew on May 27, 1963, and exceeded Mach 2 on its maiden flight. The F-4 platform proved to be very flexible, with modifications that could indeed handle the requirements of all the branches fairly well, and subsequent changes only improved them more. They actually set multiple world records. Five of their speed records remained unbeaten until the F-15 Eagle appeared in 1975. They're also the only fighter that's been flown by both the Thunderbirds and the Blue Angels, the Air Force and Navy's, respectively, flight demonstration teams. Indeed, the F-4 showed great promise, and all the services were pretty happy with them. But their true test came in the Vietnam War. Now, it goes without saying that the Vietnam War was kind of a total mess from pretty much every angle. There's no question about that. And going into the detail about the conflict would take an insanely long time because it was way more complicated than most people think. But when it comes to the F-4 in particular, well, both the U.S. Air Force and the Navy 
had very high expectations of the Phantom going in. They assumed that its access to the latest hardware in terms of firepower, the best available onboard radar money could buy, as well as the highest speed and acceleration properties of any military aircraft they had, combined with new tactics they developed over the years, would provide them a major advantage over Russian MiGs that the Viet Cong were using. But things didn't go quite as smoothly as they had thought. The Soviet planes weren't exactly pushovers, particularly involving the MiG-21. The Fishbeds were smaller and less powerful than the F-4s, but they were very agile. A skilled Fishbed pilot could outmaneuver a Phantom, and over the course of the war, F-4 pilots were credited with about 150 MiG kills, but at a cost of 42 Phantoms. That does sound like the F-4s won in the end, which, I mean, yes, but also that was way higher than they thought. And the performance showed that the Soviet aircraft probably shouldn't be underestimated going forward, and it would lead both the Air Force and the Navy to push for further fighter development, culminating in the F-15 and the F-14, respectively. But the F-4 was still well-liked either way. They had done well, just not as well as everybody had hoped. And they would remain in service for a significant amount of time even after Vietnam. A few were even used in Operation Desert Storm as Wild Weasel aircraft which is a code name that's given by the U.S. Air Force to an aircraft of any type that's equipped with anti-radiation missiles and tasked with the suppression of enemy air defenses. That role in particular is actually commonly associated with the F-4s. They were good at it. Really good at it. But nothing lasts forever, and eventually the F-4s would have to be retired sometime. After all, they were first introduced in 1960, and the last of them was withdrawn from combat use at least as far as the United States was concerned in 1996, though admittedly we did still keep them around for use as target drones until 2016. A lot of other countries still use the F-4. Japan, for example, wouldn't retire theirs till 2021, and Iran still uses theirs as far as anyone seems to know, but the last time it was confirmed was 2014, when they did conduct airstrikes, actually, against ISIS targets. The Phantoms also saw use by Australia, Egypt, Germany, Greece, South Korea, Spain, Turkey, the UK, just to name a few. They were an insanely prevalent aircraft, and it was probably because they were flexible. Yeah, their maneuverability in a dogfight wasn't exactly superior, but admittedly, they were designed as an interceptor. They're meant to kill you before you get to the dogfight part, you know? Plus, they were great at air-to-ground, and they became legendary for their performance as wild weasels. They're actually one of my favorite airplanes ever, and I know I'm not alone in that. I'm sure that from now to the far distant future, there will still be plenty of us that fully appreciate the fabulous Phantom. Beautiful. And with that, a special thank you to all my underwater train finders, some dude 267, Orange Glass, Benjamin Owens, Panzer Kitsune 131-232, Anzac A1 Arthur Roy, Tommy Rossini, Lord Captain Von Thrust III, Brian, Jack Carson's Roro videos, Lord Off 444, Mark Holding Murder Drones Doll, A Person 723, DM Tribal Typhoon, Alfonso Lapuche, Royal Hunter 2860, Icefer 1405, Charles Kwiatkowski, Matthew Wolf, Mr. Sleepy, Matt Weaver, Tom Red Lion, NS Productions 8104, Hannah Bird, Hendrick Motorsports Fan 5, Wheeljack 8401, Rescues Greyhounds, The Baxter, Caleb Crosswhite, Ohio Trucker 1, Joshua Long, Andrew Bowen, Bradley Bowden, Dr. Racer 78, Josh Johnson, Hayden DeGro, Travis Delinsky, Caleb Rainwaters, Prez Drenton, and Master of None. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fun farewell. <laughs>